Hey bookaholics and welcome back to another video. Today I am bringing you a book haul. These are the books that I have accumulated physically over the last couple of months. I have my birthday in May, I have Mother's Day in May. Most of these are from those. Also went on a shopping trip in May. So these these are the books. These are all of them and there's a lot. So we're gonna get cracking. I'm gonna start out with the three that I have read because I read these pretty much as soon as I got them because I read them. I got them in May, read them in May. And the first one of those is This Is How You Lose the Time War by Max Gladstone and Amal Al Motar. This is one that is a sci-fi romance and we are following red and blue who are on opposite sides of this conflict that is happening over time and space they leave each other notes throughout time and begin to fall in love with each other this is one that i end up giving four stars it's really well written it's really intricately written it's got an epistolary style to it it's really short i did think that more of this book was in the telling than in the story but it was a good time if you want a fuller review of this then i will leave my May wrap up linked down below. The next one that I read in May is sadly one that I didn't absolutely love but I did enjoy and that is The Red Scholar's Wake by Aliette de Bodard. This is a sapphic sci-fi in which we are following Siege who is a bot maker and a data analyst whose ship gets taken over by notorious pirate Ricefish. However Ricefish doesn't want to kill Siege, she wants Siege's help and therefore ensues this romance and this revolution-ish style story across this galaxy. And the final one that I have already read is Fable by R.F. Kuang. This is a dark academia in which we are following Robin Swift who is a young Chinese boy who gets taken to England by a professor when his family pass away and he is taught English and therefore he is completely bilingual English and Chinese which is essential to colonialism because within colonialism one of the powers that is used is the power of silver and someone who can think and dream in that language is someone who can definitely push forth the colonial effort. So Robin is then thrust into the Tower of Babel which is in the University of Oxford in this world. He then has to reconcile with the idea that his love of academia is also hurting his people and it is the role that academia and intellectualism play towards colonialism. Continuing on with some standalones we have The Daughter of Dr Moreau by Sylvia Morano Garcia. This is a retelling of the island of Dr Moreau from the perspective of Dr Moreau's daughter and we are following Carlotta as she is trying to understand what all of these strange creatures on her father's island are. I believe that there's an element of romance to it. I really liked Gods of Jade and Shadow by the Saucer, so I was really excited to be picking up more from her. Talking of Silvia Moreno-Garcia, another one that I picked up by her is Certain Dark Things. This is a paranormal story in which we have cartels, but they are bum. I think. I'm unsure. I'm very excited to be getting to this one. I don't know very much about it but it is very short and again I really like seeing how Silvia Moreno Garcia plays with different genres so this will be her take on Paranormal and I'm excited to see it. Another standalone that I picked up is Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas. This is one that is a dark academia. In it we are following Ines who has joined Catherine House. Catherine House is this very prestigious university but it's locked doors. For three years you disappear. You go into Catherine House complete isolation, no contact with the outside world. And while most people join Catherine House for the prestige, Ines actually chooses it for the isolation. But this story isn't really about why Ines chose Catherine House. It's about why Catherine House chose Ines. I'm very excited to be getting to some more Dark Academia, especially by an author of colour, and this one sounds like it's going to be a blast. And the last of the standalones that I have is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. I was not going to be picking up anything else by V12 after Shades of Magic. I wasn't fussed, but my friend Eleanor sent me a copy of the first book in the Villains duology, and I really, really liked it. And now I am back on my bullshit. So I am here to go and give this one a go. This is a romance, I believe, and it is on the more literary side and we are following Addy LaRue who to escape a arranged marriage in the 1700s I think it is she has made a deal with the devil however part of the deal is that no one will ever remember her she is perpetually forgotten and therefore she is important to no one throughout her life and 300 years later she finally encounters someone who does 
remember her. I'm really excited to get into this one and see how I feel about V.E. Schwab in a new genre. And now getting into the series, the first series that I have is I have the binder of the Tales of Earthsea series by Ursula K. Le Guin. This is one that is illustrated throughout because it is anniversary sort of edition and I am really excited to get to this one. I know that Ursula K. Le Guin is cited as one of the most influential influences on Robert Hobb who wrote my favourite series so I am really excited to give this one a whirl. I don't know a huge amount about it though. This isn't one that I've picked up because of the synopsis so I'm going to keep it where I have not really much of a clue of what this is about yet and I'm fine with that. The next series that I have is The God King Chronicles by Mike Brooks. I have heard nothing but amazing things about this trilogy and it consists of The Black Coast, The Splinter King and The Godbreaker. I believe that this is the story about how there were two sides of a conflict that were constantly at war so when one of the sides of the conflict shows up at the shores of the other they believe that it is to start a war but it turns out they're actually having to flee their homeland because of an invasion of demons of some kind and they are prophesizing the end of the world so it's about how this group of people then have to live on the coast of their once enemies so that they can be kept safe from the demons that are ravaging their homelands. I don't know if we're getting multiple perspectives, I don't know if we're getting it from both sides of the conflict but I am very excited to give this one a go. Another huge chunky trilogy that I am excited to get to is the Legacy Trilogy by Matthew Ward. This is another very well regarded epic fantasy trilogy that can of Legacy of Ash, Legacy of Steel and Legacy of Light. I believe that this is a downfall of an empire style story in which we have people who were once rulers of an empire and would rule as council now instead all vying against each other to increase their power. So as this society begins to crumble and fall heroes rise. I don't know anything else about it. I've heard amazing things. I'm very excited. Another series that I have gotten my hands on and I'm super excited for is The Age of Dread by Stephen Arian. This is the sequel series to The Age of Darkness and I am very excited to hopefully binge through all six books because Stephen has said that they are all like one story so it takes place a while after this is I think 10 years later. I think it's similar in the sense of The Faithful and The Fallen and then you have The Old Blood and Bone series where there are some crossover characters and stuff. I'm really excited to get to this trilogy. I don't know a huge amount about it and I don't want to know about it because obviously it is the sequel series so I feel like I would get huge spoilers if I read the synopsis of these. But this series consists of Mageborn, Magefall and Magebane. The next series that I have is one that I'm super super excited for because it is by one of my favourite authors and that is The City Duology by N.K. Jemisin. The first one being The City We Became and the sequel The World We Make. This is one one where we have cities that are sentient and I believe that the first book is following the awakening of New York City and each borough has a human representation essentially and I am super excited. I believe that there is like an eldritch horror in here and I think that there are also possibly people who are not wanting the city to awaken. I didn't buy this for the synopsis, I bought it because it's Jemison and I am super excited for it because it's Jemison. And the very last trilogy that I have to talk to you about today is the Burning Blade and Silver Eye trilogy by Django Wexler. This trilogy consists of Ashes of the Sun, Blood of the Chosen and Emperor of Ruin. In this trilogy we are following two siblings, one who as a child was I think rather sick and therefore taken away by the Republic and we have their brother who was left behind. Now the one sibling has since been raised by the Republic and has been given every luxury and therefore believes strongly in this society. And then we have the other brother who has always resented the Republic for taking their sibling away from them. However that means that both of of these siblings are placed on the wrong side of the conflict. So will the bonds of blood be able to overcome these ideals that are coming to a head in this narrative? I'm very excited. I do love me a sibling narrative so we'll see how I feel about this one but I have heard such incredible things and I believe it is a sci fantasy as well like it's got the, the two which I'm very excited to see how I feel about that. And there you have it those are all the books that I have hauled in the last few months. I am super excited for all of these as would be expected I suppose if you're buying books but let me know if you've read any of these and your thoughts on them and I will hopefully catch you in another one soon. Bye!